engaging citizens. A game changer for development? Identifying the gaps between citizens and governments. Jean-Paul Faguet, Professor of the Political Economy of Development, London School of Economics. In this video, I'll begin by outlining the gaps that exist between citizens and their governments, and Shirin will then explain how ICT can bridge that gap. As Rakesh Rajani discussed in the previous module, a critical aspect of the relationship between citizens and their governments is the accountability gap. The short, or everyday road to accountability, whereby citizens receive services such as education, water, and healthcare, is central to the relationship between citizens and governments. To shorten the road to accountability and bring services closer to the citizen, many countries have decentralized. However, decentralization is not a quick policy lever, but rather a long-term process that operates at deep levels of politics and society. In my research on Bolivia, where decentralization reform was implemented in 1994, some municipalities responded to decentralization with transparent, accountable government, while others suffered ineptitude, corruption, and worse. Why? To begin with, let's examine the basic question of whether central or local governments are more responsive to citizens' needs. The degree to which local governments are more efficient and responsive to local needs can vary greatly within a country. Optimists claim local governments are more responsive to citizens than centralized government institutions, arguing that they increase citizen participation and governmental accountability while improving allocative efficiency and generating greater equity and service distribution. Pessimists dispute this, arguing that local governments are too susceptible to elite capture, that is, the process by which powerful individuals divert state resources to their own ends. They also argue that government at the local level normally lacks the technical, human, and financial resources needed to provide public services that are both efficient and responsive to local demand. So far, neither side has been able to win this debate with convincing empirical evidence. This leads us to our next question. How can governments overcome the challenges of elite capture and limited capacity to create more inclusive institutions? Inclusive institutions create incentives and opportunities for citizen engagement, while extractive institutions concentrate power and opportunity in the hands of only a few. Between 2002 and 2003, Ethiopia decentralized service delivery through intergovernmental fiscal transfers from the federal to regional and then down to municipal or Wareda administrations. The idea was that decentralizing to local governments would improve service delivery. But many worried that limited local capacity and a hierarchical traditional society would undermine local government effectiveness. Instead, decentralization has resulted in a remarkable improvement in the delivery of essential primary social services to ordinary Ethiopians. For example, child mortality has fallen from 123 per thousand in 2005 to 88 in 2010, and the primary net enrollment rate rose from 68% in 2005 to 82% in 2010. The benefits of participatory budget spending at the Wareda level on health, education, and agriculture accrued to all income levels. Wareda level spending on health and education is particularly pro-poor. 58% of it goes to the two bottom wealth quintiles. Overall, the current approach appears to be reaching women and helping some of Ethiopia's historically disadvantaged areas and ethnic groups to catch up with the rest of the country. While political competition at the national level remains limited, competition at the local level in Ethiopia is healthy. The government has introduced a number of social accountability mechanisms. Greater citizen participation and the intrinsic motivation of people working in their local areas may have helped overcome initially weak administrative capacity. Ethiopia's model for delivering basic services appears to be succeeding and to confirm that services improve when service providers are more accountable to citizens. Finally, how can the mismatch between government spending and citizens' needs be resolved? Public expenditure is a powerful tool to guarantee access to essential goods and services for all strata of society. However, in many cases, distortion and misallocation of public monies, rather than the lack of resources, prevent this from happening. One of the most famous innovations was the participatory budgeting model developed in Porto Alegre, Brazil, an alternative budgeting process 
that allows citizens to negotiate with government officials over the municipality's budgetary allocation and its investment priorities. Results suggest that adoption of participatory budgeting at the municipal level is associated with increased expenditure on basic sanitation and health services, such as water and sewerage connections, and waste removal. However, the simple adoption of public budgeting does not translate into automatic welfare improvements. There is substantial evidence in the literature that participatory budgeting needs not only financial resources to back investment projects, but also, and crucially, political commitment from local governments. I have illustrated some of the gaps that exist between governments and their citizens. Next, Shirin will illustrate how ICT has the potential to bridge such gaps. <laughs>